Welcome back to the Game Collection. Today, I'm going to be talking about a game that's been consistently at the top of RPG top lists since it was released in 1999. The game is an often coveted jewel not only for its rarity, but also its steep price tag. And in fact, it was one of those games that I had already written off long ago as being one of those unobtainable games that I'd never get to play and talk about on the show. But thanks to the kind generosity of a viewer, Dustman B, the impossible has become possible. I am Super Derek, and this is Suikoden 2. begin to talk about such a universally acclaimed game. It's difficult to approach the game with your expectations in check because the game's reputation precedes it. There's a real hazard for players who approach games that are placed upon such high pedestals. Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII, these are all great games. You could probably even find ways to prove that they are objectively great games. But in my experience, and in hearing from you, my viewers, if there is one thing that can tarnish the experience of a great game, it's hype. So how does Suikoden 2 stack up? Suikoden 2 begins by following our heroes Joey and Ryo, adolescents in a junior brigade in the Highland Army. The night our story begins, war between Highland and Joustone is winding down after a peace treaty was signed between the two countries, and a long-held tension within the camp has broken. Our heroes talk about getting to go home and see their families. Some soldiers can't sleep from the excitement. Security is slackened. After our heroes slip off to sleep, they are rudely awakened by a surprise attack in the night, sending the camp into disarray. By keeping cool heads, our heroes avoid a trap sprung upon them, only to realize that they were set up by the very Highland army for whom they fought. This ambush was a false flag attack that would be used as justification for Highland to prolong the war against Joustone. Our two heroes attempt a daring escape and are cornered. The two make a solemn pact to reunite someday should they survive what is to come next. The two take a leap of faith, forcing the two lifelong friends' paths to diverge. Our story follows Ryo as he finds himself deep in enemy territory and unsure if he even has a home to return to. What follows is a tale as old as time, which has been retold a thousand different ways. Suikoden 2 takes a very somber approach with the storytelling and handles the subject matter in a very mature way. It only briefly comes up for air once in a while with fleeting moments of levity. This isn't a happy-go-lucky adventure story, it's a cautionary tale of the tragedies of war. To say that Suikoden 2 is kind of a downer would be about right. There were several moments throughout the game that just left me feeling gutted. Moments that had me asking, how could anything turn out right after this has happened? And most of those questions went unanswered. But the game also has a handful of moments that are made of what can only be described as pure badassery. There isn't a ton of unique animation within the game, but some has been tucked into just the right moments to give some scenes the little extra gravitas, a little more weight, a little more power that can stir up a certain giddiness that I'm experiencing less and less as I grow older. The writer and director had a real knack for gradually building tension and culminating in these exclamation point moments that left a strong impact on me. The pacing of the game felt a little episodic and cyclical. This provided a lot of structure that informs the player, so I was seldom left asking myself, what exactly do I need to do next, or how do I progress the plot now? 
but on the other hand, it did feel a little repetitive after the first few cycles. The minigames provided a fun distraction that breaks up some of the repetitiveness, though. Among these games are a cooking minigame, climbing ropes for prizes, and the triumphant return of the addicting dice game Chinchirurin. Suikoden 2's battle system plays out like Suikoden 1 with a very little deviation from the formula its predecessor established. With what appears to be an if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it mentality, the developers redoubled their efforts into other areas. One of the most notable changes is the way large military battles play out. Long gone are the rock-paper-scissors mechanics of war waging. Instead, you play the role of a commander issuing orders to various units in a tactical RPG-style engagement. While tactical RPGs aren't necessarily a strong point of mine, I did find the training wheels were left on a little longer than I would have liked. And even by the end of the game, I feel like the most difficult engagements weren't so much difficult as just drawn out. Most turns resulted in minimal damage being dealt by either side to my frustration. This is just one of the few rough edges within the game that I think could have used a bit more work overall. The world of Suikoden 2 feels a lot larger than Suikoden 1, because it is. The game has several different regions that are gradually locked and unlocked throughout the game due to storyline events, and usually multiple towns within each region. Each region also usually contains a dungeon or two of some sort related to the various problems that plague the towns or tasks that need to be completed to fulfill some strategic purpose. The dungeons have added an extra layer of complexity not present in the game's predecessor. The designer behind these dungeons certainly had my playstyle pegged as they constantly had me backtracking as soon as I'd second guessed the direction I had chosen, only to run into several more dead ends. The world presentation within Suikoden 2 is overall very similar to Suikoden 1. The sprites and portraits seem to have one extra layer of polish that get their chance to shine brightly every once in a while, but it would be easy to mistake the visuals between the two games at a quick glance. The more I played Suikoden 2, the more apparent it became that Suikoden 1 really was just a practice run that led up to this main event. The music within Suikoden 2 is another of the game's stronger points that never failed to impress. The fight against a certain mid-game boss, who I'll not mention for the sake of spoilers, was a real treat to listen to that kept me grinning from ear to ear. And if you've played Suikoden 2, you probably know which song I'm referring to. Suikoden 2 is a great game, so does it stand up to the hype? Can any game really live up to the hype that well-meaning fans have given it? Can any game really warrant these grandiose pedestals? And what exactly are we doing when we give someone the impression that a game can be a holy grail? Could we inadvertently be diminishing a player's experience by giving them impossible expectations? Suikoden 2, and all great stories like it, has the potential to give players unique experiences and offer different perspectives on the nature of the human condition. Suikoden 2 in particular really drove home to me the futility of war and our collective apparent inability to rise above it. These kinds of stories have the power to change the way you perceive the world around you. One could argue that these kinds of stories could be life-changing. But here's the truth about RPG Holy Grails. They're fun, they'll make you feel emotions, and they'll probably cost you a lot of money. But they're not gonna change your life unless you're the type of person whose life is easily changed in the first place. These Holy Grail RPGs are on pedestals not because of how fantastic they are, but because of a deep-seated emotional need for people to share life experiences with other people. And it's a feeling that I am all too familiar with myself. This show wouldn't exist without it. And it's probably that same feeling that moved Dustman B to share his copy of the game with me in the first place. Suikoden 2 was a ton of fun to play and well worth the time investment. I recommend that you pick up a copy on the PlayStation Network because it's way cheaper and easily accessible to anyone who's owned a modern Sony console within the last decade. Just try not to let that hype get to you, and I hope you have as much fun with it as I did. And if you've played it and the game speaks to you on that deeper level, that's when I'd say it's a good idea to go ahead and pick up that physical copy of the game and spend the $200 to get it. Next time, 
as I continue through the Summer of Suikoden, I'll be playing through Suikoden 3 next time on the Game Collection. Real quick before I go guys, I wanted to send a special thank you to all of my patrons who help keep this show going, and I wanted to send a special thank you to Looming Interval, who has recently become a patron of mine over on Patreon.com. If any of you guys have any interest in helping support the show by helping me purchase new equipment or putting coffee in my mug in the morning, I uh, really appreciate every single one of you. Uh, head on over to Patreon.com and check it out. We'll see you guys then.